Well, the program is The Living Room Tapes, and I'm Jack Wiegman. At The Living Room Tapes, our prerequisite is the idea that you could do life in your own living room. When you go out and pay for entertainment, activities that somebody else does, that's nice. But when you do things that are you and your family and your home, that's a whole bunch better. The Living Room Tapes. Welcome to The Living Room Tapes. Granted that the living room tapes is based on the idea that you could do things in your home, in your life, today's program faces politics and the fact that in Montana you can have personal access to politics. My guest this time is Mr. Fred Carl, who's not only an expert on the state legislature, but he's a candidate as well. In District 47, which is the university area, South Hills and Patty Canyon. Uh, <clears throat> it's a district that is primarily uh, Democrats. I happen to be Republican. But in today's market, in today's political atmosphere, uh, <clears throat> I think all of us realize that we are having problems. And with the background that I have in business and creating things, <clears throat> plus the fact that, uh, Jack, I was in the Senate years ago, and quite frankly, I don't mean to brag, but I am very proud of the fact that I am the only first-year legislator ever appointed to Legislative Council. And uh, some people may not know what that is, but that's a council that looks at problems during the interim and holds meetings. Uh, I happen to be chairman of a committee on school construction and state laboratories. And we went around the state, held meetings at schools, uh, looking at the possibility of schools being able to save money uh, when they are constructed. I was, quite frankly, very in favor of that, thinking that, hey, if we can save money for education and give it to the teachers so that children will learn more, uh, that would be great. In favor of that when I started, but I found that it was not a good way. The reason is every area has their own feeling of that particular area. Are you saying that in office it's appropriate to change your mind with new information? Uh, Personally, I think that it's very foolish for a legislator not to change his mind if the information warrants that. Uh, what about this Republican versus Democrat? Isn't it a situation if you're one, you can't talk to the other? Uh, no, <laughs> that's a good question. And the way it is now, uh, apparently there is a lot of animosity. I mentioned that I'm the only first-year legislator ever appointed to the Legislative Council. It was the Democrats that appointed me. As a matter of fact, it was the Democrats that told me to run for it. Uh, I had, <laughs> I was very surprised. I was very flattered. Uh, I had gotten along with people on both sides. I was able to uh, reason with people on both sides. And uh, there was an article in the paper by a fellow that I just met uh, the end of last year or the beginning of this year and when I met him, he said, I remember you. I testified before a committee, and you were on that committee. And he wrote a letter to the editor, and I have that letter in my trifold as a brochure that, to hand to people. Um, very complimentary. I couldn't have written it better myself. But it does show that I was able to ask the questions and uh, coordinate the different ideas so that it was understandable to me, which helped make it understandable apparently to the other members on that committee. My guest again is Mr. Fred Carl, candidate for state senate. What's the district area in? 47, which is, as I mentioned, the university area, the South Hills and Patty Canyon. But if I might go back a minute, because I was talking about when I was chairman of a committee on school construction, when I thought it was a great idea to be able to save money on the architect fees and so on. But in 
all of the smaller schools, the athletics, and the school is more or less the area for communicating with neighbors and so on. Uh, you can go back to the olden days when uh, all the women used to oh. gather uh, to wash clothes in the city, uh, in the town center back many, 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 many years ago. Uh, and if we tried to have, let's say, all brick, would that be good in an area that produces wood? Uh, the different areas want to have something that is more congenial, shows more of what that area is like, and that's only logical. You make it sound like the position of a state senator in Montana is not so much one of going in with intractable uh, goals, but you're more of an executive uh, of, a, of a sort of a business that has to make ends meet. Uh, <clears throat> As far as I'm concerned, that is very true. Uh, I'll admit that when I was there, there were people that went in with blinders on. They just wanted things the way they wanted. Another thing, we used to laugh at different legislators that wrote different bills, and they were so engrossed and so proud of what they wrote, their bill, and they had the uh, the being the author of the bill, by gosh, you better not even change a comma in that bill. They were that proud of it. Uh, and no, you have to be able to be, <clears throat> to, you have to be able to listen and look at the things as they are presented. What is the nature of the bill? What is the purpose of that bill? And number one, if it does have a good purpose, uh, it's going to go through as long as it meets all of the other requirements. Uh, I enjoyed uh, discussing with the people that were there. I enjoyed getting letters from people recommending to pass or don't pass or the reason or for, the reason or against. By the way, if I might say something to you people that are listening, when you write a letter to the legislator, don't make it one big or two big paragraphs. Use different points. You are for a bill because of this, 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 and this. Or you are against a bill because of this, this, and this. So put the name of the bill, put the title and the purpose of that bill. It makes it a lot easier for any of the legislators to look at the letter and easily decipher, look at the bill and see what it has and what you are for or against. And I know I answered every letter that was sent to me while I was there, <laughs> and quite frankly, there were quite a few. Uh, but it is nice, it's enjoyable for people to have the contact with the legislators. And it is easy for you to go to Helena and talk with the legislators. It's not easy for any of us to go to Washington to talk with members in Congress and Senate there. But we can go to Helena and we can talk to the legislators and express what we feel is important as far as we are concerned. If you're interested in, in an, uh, an event or a possibility or a law, how do you find who you can talk to? Well, first of all, if there is a bill pertaining to that particular subject, um, that is easy to find out because they are all uh, listed according to the <coughs> uh, type of bill that it is. If it's a bill pertaining to uh, cattle, It'll be listed under cattle. What do you do? Just walk into the Capitol Rotunda and ask around? Oh, yeah, that's... <clears throat> really? Most of the people there are very friendly. Um, you can find out what a bill is for. There are lists all over. The Missoulian probably will have a list of the different bills. And if I belong to the wrong political party, will somebody be rude to me in the Capitol? Some of them might, <laughs> but uh, if a person is rude, 
to you because you're interested in something, to me, that shows that that person is a small person. Uh, there is no reason to be rude. I may disagree with you, and or you disagree with me, but that doesn't mean that we can't sit down and have a decent conversation. I had conversations with many of the legislators when I was over there. We did not agree on everything. Nobody agrees on everything. I mean, believe it or not, um, when my wife was alive, we didn't agree on everything, and <laughs> and she stuck with me for almost 51 years. So, uh, you know, you have to try and get along, and it is easy if you honestly want to get along and want to get what's done that is best for the state, and it can be done. My guest again on the Living Room Tapes is Mr. Fred Carl, candidate for state legislature, the state senate. Fred, uh, what about young people? Uh, I see people inviting kids to the state uh, capitol. Are they really welcome there? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm not sure now if uh, they allow guests to sit on the floor, uh, on the floor of the Senate with you. I had a number of uh, people, young people that sat on the floor of the Senate with me. Uh, back then we could do it. But you know, it's, I feel that young people should get involved, should know what's going on, should know the difference between the free enterprise system and socialism and uh, everything that is happening in our country. We cannot make a just decision, an intelligent decision, if we don't have something to, ju uh, to judge by. We need a perspective. If a perspective, most people have a perspective which is during their lifetime. Uh, <clears throat> few will look to the past, history repeats itself. And knowing a perspective and being able to judge and relate to a perspective, I think is extremely important. Having young people to do that as they grow older, I think is, to me, is mandatory. I gave an illustration in a letter, I've written a lot of letters to the editor that have been the Missoulian. and. When we look at a perspective, and as I say, we judge it from basically the lifespan that we've been in. An illustration I used, I was helping, this was many, many years ago, I was helping my, my uh, father-in-law uh, with the project. And I was there working, and a young lad came in. Uh, he was in the fourth grade. And I enjoy talking with young kids. I try to get them to set goals and things like that. Well, I asked him where he went to school, and he told me the school. I said, oh, yeah, that's a new one they just built a few years ago. And he looked at me, no. He said, I've been going there all my life. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's, uh, you know, it just shows that we have perspective, and a lot of times many people don't look at the past and how it affects today. And today is, we can look at the past and we can see things that happen. Today on the Living Room Tapes, you've met my guest, Mr. Fred Carl. Any one thing you want to give an audience? <laughs> well, first of all, make sure that you vote. Secondly, as far as my voting for me or finding out more about me, I have a website. It will tell anything that you want to know about me. And my website is Carl for the numeral for Montana MT State Senate dot com. Carl for MT State Senate dot com. And that's the living room tapes for today. I'm Jack Wiegman, your host. Be back with us again on MCAS Channel 7 here in Missoula when we talk about things that you can do with your life without waiting for somebody else.